no good. You ain't worth the salt that goes in your brain. And you goes and puts Miss Ritzmore's step in, in with Mr. George's shirt. And Mr. George's wife almost gets divorced away from him on account of a no-account lazy scalawag like you. I declare you ain't worth the vittles you eat. You're gonna stoop with this. Only until I dies. Why, you is a disgrace to them pants you is, Wild. Well, it looks like the pants them a disgrace to me. The red deer of a man letting a woman boss him around all the time like you like Clary does. I like you know, it. Why? Is you, you ever gonna wake up and be boss your own home? Says which? I, I says, has you any desire to be boss of your own home? <laughs> has you got an idea? Uh-huh. Yeah. Whereby I can be the boss over Clary? For certain there. <laughs> and I won't be heading no funeral parade? Now, you have said it. And you won't be have to tooting bums and laundry way over to the south side, helping to clean up the house and washing the dishes. Why, boy, you have been the woman in that our family. What I says a man ought to do when he gets mad is nothing. And he ought to do it all the time. Now, what I says to you is, Tyler, see, wake up. Be a man and go on and show Clary that you is the boss. Boy, that's music to my ears, but it sounds like trouble. Well, I said to you, if you ever... Put out a bill see, if you ever get the idea to be boss of your own home, let me know and I'll fix it up for you. Of course, you is aiming to be boss, ain't you? Uh-huh. Well, and you's also aiming to have your breakfast served to you in bed every morning. And you don't want to do no work. You want to sit around at night and cook things easy. And especially, you please to have plenty of money in your pocket all the time. So you can shoot crap and play pool and bug figures things down. Now, ain't that a fact? Floyd, when you talk, I can hear the angels sing. So my advice to you is to go on down there to lawyer choose and get him to start a divorce proceedings against Clary. Floyd, uh, what you ain't got is no brain. Well, how come? Wait, there's two reasons I ain't going to divorce myself away from Clary. Now, the first reason is this. Maybe she does raise hell with me all the time, but she gives me three square meals a day. And, and the other reason is, she ain't one left me. Oh, now, I ain't never said nothing about you divorcing yourself away from class. Uh, yeah, she did. No privacy, the trouble with you is your tongue is too loose. It slips quicker than your brain works. You never gives me a chance to finish. I, I just begun. But go ahead, Floyd. Well, you go down the law you choose there, and you get to the boat. You ledges cruelty, and your axes for alimony. Axes for witches? Alimony. Well, what they mean? Alimony is money which the divorced person who has got it gives it to the divorced person which ain't got it. And they pays it every week. Yeah, but now, suppose I don't get no divorce. You ain't gonna get one. Why, you ain't even aiming to get one. That is where the elegant part of my scheme comes in. When Clary sees that she is going to lose her man for show, she is going to get worried and feel sorry for what she has done. And she's going to come up to you and right away throw both her arms right around you and, and strangle me. Oh, no. She's going to see that she has done. Uh, now, they is all fixed, Brother Robson. And uh, my man served these papers at once. Uh, Joshua. Uh, serve these papers on to Mrs. Clary Robson and report here immediately. Yes, sir. So there ain't nothing for you to be worried about at all. 
Does you notify me when them papers done been served? Instantaneousness is the badge of my office, Brother Robinson. And does you wait here a few minutes, you get receipt for them said papers. Now, just make yourself comfortable. I've got a little work to tender, and I'll be right with you. Don't everything would be all right. <laughs> $10 per week for you, but I get five. Uh, uh, has you served them papers on Mrs. Robinson? Mm, yes, a lawyer, too. Well, what did she say? Well, it tain't exactly what she said. Lawyer choose is how she said it. What'd she say, colored boy? She sort of said like this. There's one skinny colored man's gonna take a cabbage ride with a heap of flowers and a band of music. Only he ain't gonna smell them formals, nor need to hear them letters. I bet she was meaning me. Spec she is. Somebody been here from Lawyer Chu's office to see you. My goodness, sweetie. What's the matter with you? Yeah, I sure was going to be down there to see you, see, because I got some very important business to talk over with you. All right, don't fool me, Mr. Slappy. No, honey, I'd rather rule you than fool you. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye now, honey. Don't fall down. That show is a hot-looking girl. That Melissa T. is all right. No, <laughs> you is the no schemeless man that ever was. You know Claire's done fold me down? She won't even say the first word to me. Not the first. You is the no schemeless, no talking. Now, no. resist a minute, privacy. Resist a minute. Let me ask you a question. How does you expect to get a divorce without a correspondent? You just naturally can't be, that's all. If you wants to get a divorce, you has just got to have a correspondent. Why, Claire has been sitting, waiting, and says to herself that this ain't no decent divorce at all, on the count of that there ain't no other woman mixed up in it. She's been waiting for the other woman to show up, and the minute she does, She's going to come to you and ask you to forgive her and to took you back again. Now, don't that sound reasonable? You mean Claire is going to get jealous of this other gal and win me back from her? Uh, precisely. Precisely. All you got to do is to get yourself a nice looking gal that looks scrumptious like Melissa Cheese and took her to the moving picture show and your neighbors will do the rest. Oh, Floyd, you ain't serious, is you? Well, what course are you? Man, you fixed to get me killed or something. Oh, you ain't going to be no more killer than you is, is you? Does you do it? 
Reckon I does, Flo, making a terrible mistake. Of course she ain't make no mistake. Why? Look here, Flavius. I was just talking to Melissa T here just a minute ago. And I's done fixed everything jam up. All you's got to do that is to come on down there with me and I'll introduce you to her. Man, Melissa Cheese is the best little correspondent there is in Birmingham. Now, come on down here. Let me knock you down. We'll do something, yeah. man. Come on. Good evening, Miss Robinson. Good evening. I saw your husband going in the theater with Miss Cheese. Uh-huh. Well, I'll fix him. It's a dirty shame the way it's, he's carrying it's on. It's dirty how he treats his wife. Hungry. He's dirty. Do <laughs> you like that picture, honey? Oh, I love Grand. Good evening. Evening. I want to have a little talk with you. Miss Cheese, uh, meet Undertaker Keith Gaines. You know I's your friend. Uh, I reckon so. Man, you better be careful. How come? Your wife Clara's out there waiting for you. What? Your wife Clara's out there waiting for you and Melissa to come out of this thing. Lawsy. Don't go on that floor and slap me. Man, if anything should happen to you real sudden, does I get the job? What job? Man, you. You know how you and I have been friends a long time. man, get out of my way. Let me out of here. Good evening, Melissa. I say good evening, Melissa. E e evening, Mrs. Robson. But what you doing out here by yourself, honey? By myself? Well, yeah. You's all alone, ain't you? I don't see nobody with you. You know, somebody done told me that you was down here with a man what used to be related to me by marriage. But I don't see no man. <laughs> So what, seeing as you is all alone, but what you say, we go down yonder to the gold crowd and get some ice cream soda, huh? All right, Clary, all drink, honey. All right. Who was them two ladies with you, privacy? They look like you about to lost your meal ticket, bud. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> Floyd, come here. Man, you done got me into this mess. Now you got to get me out of it. Well, boy, you ain't in no mess. Was I in any worse a mess, Mr. Floyd Slappy? There ain't but one thing you gonna need. Uh, and what that is? That's an undertaker. Boy, you know there's only one thing that matters with you. You never live wait till a fella tells you what he has to tell you before you up and go. Now, what did you do when I told you about that divorce and the alimony? Up and away you go. Then I tell you about the correspondent. And before I has a chance to finish, ups and you runs off. Now, will you listen to just two little hunger strike? Who strike? A hunger strike. Man, you sure is crazy. Yeah, who's crazy? Yeah, you is. Uh, how come? Yeah. Any man thinks I'm going to stop eating is crazy. He's Boy, crazy in the head. Let me tell you one thing. There ain't nothing that hurts a woman more than when her man don't eat her cooking. And on the count of Clary being such an elegant cook, does she see you starving? She's going to be miserable because she... You ain't eating that which she is cooking for you. Is you positively sure? Absolutely. All right, Florence. I'm going to try you just one more time. And I'm telling you, if it don't work, I'm going to take my razor and...
villain? Come here. What's the matter now, Friday? Is he? Man, I starved. Yeah. I ain't had nothing to eat in three days. My, my stomach thinks my throat is cut. I'll quit. Oh, no, don't do that now. Clary is weakening every minute. She is sure going to give in on tomorrow. I hope so. I, I know so. <laughs> Which is? The burglar. The burglar what hit me on my head. Oh, him? Sure. I, I hit him over the head with a piece of wood when I caught him eating that chicken which you cook so rotten, and off he run. Oh, privacy. I didn't know what a fine man you were. I reckon I ain't been good to you. Why don't you eat what I've been cooking for you? Well, them eatings ain't so good, Claire. Well, if you just don't divorce away from me, I'll show you just how good I can cook. Well, I, I done started them divorce proceedings now, and I reckon I'll have to go on through with it. Oh, honey, please, please don't. I'll do anything you want. Well, first off now, you got to pay his lawyer to chew them fees I owe him. And then, you got to promise me that I don't have to never do no more work. Because work ain't good for a man like what I is. And last but not least, you got to pay me three dollars alimony each and every week. Now, does you do it or does you don't? Yes, I do, darling. All right then, now. <laughs> going out to get some more washing, honey. <laughs> I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, Peter. Oh, my, my. <laughs> 